everyone. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending where you're at. It's April here and welcome to my channel. Since we returned from New Zealand not too long ago, I thought it'd be cool to show you all the things that we purchased and we brought home from our trip. So let's get started. The first thing I wanna show you is this cool little miniature replica of the Gandalf hat. It's actually made from New Zealand wool and it's made in New Zealand. Gandalf is a character from The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit books. Although I'm not a diehard Tolkien fan, I've actually never read those books. I have seen all the movies and I really enjoyed them. I know there's a lot of people who argue that you have to read the books first before you watch a movie and books are always better, but I really did enjoy the movies a lot and Hobbiton was one of those places that I knew I really wanted to visit this time that I went to New Zealand and it did not disappoint. It was super cool, it was so cute. All the detailing and all the little Hobbit holes or Hobbit homes were so immaculate. It totally looked so realistic that Hobbits actually live there. Another thing that we got from Hobbiton is this green dragon mug. And I do have quite a bit of coffee mugs from all my travels, so I have a, a pretty cool collection going right now. But this is a green dragon, and the green dragon is an inn or a pub from the books and the movie. And they actually recreated the green dragon at Hobbiton. And I didn't know this, but part of our tour included a drink at the Green Dragon and there were alcoholic beverages. You had three choices of beer or ale. For people who don't drink or who can't drink, there is ginger beer. Second mug that I got from Hobbiton is this mug. It doesn't look like much, but then you pour hot water in there and it changes color. And then the inscription from the ring, from Lord of the Rings, kind of shows up. So that's pretty neat. Another mug that I got is this mug from the Waitomo Glowworm Caves. This trip to New Zealand is actually my second trip. I've been to New Zealand many, many, many years ago. And the one thing that I remember from that trip was the Waitomo Glowworm Caves. It was that memorable. It was such a magical experience. I couldn't wait to take my daughter this time. If you ask my daughter what her favorite part of the trip was, she'll probably say the Waitomo Glowworm Caves. So basically the Waitomo Glowworm Caves are caves filled with glowworms, as the name suggests. And glowworms actually emit this kind of bluish green bioluminescence. I know that's a fancy word. The tour starts off, you go through like a cave, and then you get onto this boat, and your tour guide pulls the boat through the water. So there's actually a river that runs through these caves. And if you look up into the cave ceiling, you'll see a bunch of these like bright little blue lights. They look like stars in the night sky. It's so amazing. Another mug that we got is this one from Lake Takapo and it's from the Dark Sky Project. So Lake Takapo is this absolutely gorgeous lake. The water there is this crystal clear turquoise color. It's absolutely gorgeous, but people not only go there to enjoy the lake, but to also go stargazing. There's hardly any light pollution there. It's pitch black at nighttime, so you can see all the stars and probably planets and even the Milky Way. We unfortunately couldn't go on the tour. There was an age limit to that tour. You had to be at least six years old, and my daughter is only four. I think the reason why they do that is because the tour is rather late at nighttime it's like around 10 30 and there's a lot of talking involved so it's not going to be that exciting for someone who's under six i think however on our way back from dinner we did catch a glimpse of the sky obviously rocking home and it was so beautiful you can see all the stars and the milky way so i bought these two sets of magnets from the dark sky project here you go so i can remember that experience by. Another thing I bought from the Dark Sky Project is this little keychain, and it just says Takapo on there. Even though it doesn't seem like much, I thought it was really cool because this is how the street signs are in New Zealand, and it's just some cool way to remember our experience again. And you can actually get all different sorts of like city names and street names in this. They have a whole bunch in the souvenir stores, but I really like this one. This is Takapo. Some other magnets that we purchased are these two little triangular ones, and they're actually Actually from Wellington. This one has a little cable car on there. Wellington itself is such a cool city. It's like a foodie paradise. You can go and do some shopping. It's a college town, so it's really busy. What I really recommend is doing the cable car ride. It's inexpensive. It's a short ride up to the top. And from the top, you can see just beautiful sweeping views of Wellington. On the day that we went, it was really, really sunny and beautiful. 
And adjacent to the cable car is the Wellington Botanic Gardens. The Wellington Botanic Gardens is huge. It, they have a lot of native and non-native plants and flowers, and I think they even have like fruit trees, and they have a beautiful rose garden. They have all these cool playgrounds, and the playgrounds in general in New Zealand are amazing. My daughter had a blast going to these playgrounds. Yeah, it's definitely a place I think you can spend like, oh, probably a whole day at. If you're in Wellington for more than a few days, I would definitely say take your time and go check out the Botanic Garden. Here's another magnet that I got and it says Wanaka on it. And I've already heard this from several people that Wanaka is like a sleepier little version of Queenstown and it's really true. You don't hear much about Wanaka, but it was definitely such a surprise for us. It was one of our favorite cities, the walks there and the scenery are so magical it's like something from a fairy tale the shopping there and the food is also really good if you're ever in new zealand in the south island please go visit wanaka the next up is i have several sets of coasters that i purchased from my last few years of travel i've actually collected a lot of coasters for some reason so i'm adding to my collection first set of coasters i got is this one it's made out of new zealand rimu and pawa rimu is a tree native to New Zealand and its signature look is basically this honey colored wood grain and power from what I understand is is what we call abalone shell so they use it a lot in kind of decorative things so if you have any detail work on anything it sometimes they sometimes use power shell I know my daughter second set of coasters are these ones and they're made from recycled wood Again, you'll see that the detail work is done with the abalone or powa shell. And I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. I think it's called powa, but um, one of them has a kiwi bird and the other one has a little fake tail, which is all wildlife you can find in New Zealand. Last but not least are these coasters, this set of coasters, and these are just kind of fun, quirky, um, it says New Zealand artifacts. So it's basically things that you can find in New Zealand. And the soundtrack right now is provided by my daughter in the background. Speaking of all things New Zealand, I also got this cool reusable cup. This is really popular in New Zealand, obviously, it's so we don't produce more waste and a lot of coffee shops will give you a discount on coffee if you bring your own cup. So this one I really like, it says it's the flavors of New Zealand jelly beans. Some of these jelly beans, it says pineapple lump, which are these really delicious candies. They're like, Pineapple candy is covered with chocolate, very good. LMP, which is a fizzy kind of drink, it's like a lemon drink there. It kind of tastes like spray to me. Flat white is kind of like a latte. Baked beans, we had a lot of that. Hokey pokey, kiwi fruit, chocolate fish, cheesels, which are a snack, and tomato sauce. So another food related item, I guess, would be these two wine stoppers that we got. This one, again, it's just the fern motif. And this one is like a kiwi bird in like this geometric design. We did end up trying a lot of New Zealand wines. They're delicious. If we ever have a chance to purchase those wines, we definitely will. And then we'll use these if we don't finish a bottle in a day. So another thing that I got is this fish hook. The fish hook is a symbol of plenty, determination, good health, and prosperity. Definitely something that we all need right now. This is actually made out of ceramic, but it's modeled after a green stone carving. Greenstone is, um, well, it's a green stone. The color is green. This is highly valued by the Maori and they use it to carve intricate designs. I did see a lot of jewelry, like necklaces um, with the green stone on there, but I actually didn't get any and this is the only thing I got that uh, kind of resembles the green stone. Another thing that we got is this cool little cup or a little vase. And this is actually made out of fern tree wood. There's a lot of fern trees in New Zealand. And if you ever see the trunk of them, you'll see these kind of intricate patterns. And each print is actually unique. So it's kind of like a fingerprint. And I thought that was pretty cool. I only got two like body products from New Zealand. So New Zealand is really well known for their Manuka honey and lanolin. So I got two hand creams. One of them is made from Manuka honey hand and body lotion, and the other one is made from lanolin. Lanolin oil is extracted from the wool of the sheep after the sheep is shorn, and it's known to soften, rejuvenate, and nourish, improve elasticity and moisture retention. It has antibacterial properties and is beneficial to healing. So I just got these two, you know, we've all been washing our hands a lot recently, and um, it's good to moisturize afterwards. And I do have, 
eczema on my hands and hopefully these will help. So now we're gonna move on to clothing items. So the first shirt that I wanna show you is this one and it's, it says, who stole the cookie from the cookie jar? And it's from Cookie Time. <laughs> so Cookie Time is kind of like an institution in Christchurch. If you go to any grocery store, you'll see Cookie Time cookies sold there. And if you go on Air New Zealand, they pass out Cookie Time cookies. The cookies are very delicious. My favorite was the chewy golden oatmeal cookie. It was really good. We bought many cookies, ate them all on our trip. It was very delicious and we love cookies. What better way to remember our cookie time experience than with a cookie time t-shirt? New Zealand is very well known for their wool products. If you ever go to New Zealand, there's a ton of sheep everywhere in alpacas and they're most known for the merino and possum blend wool. I got two scarves here. One of them is a purple one. Here you go. Well, it's kind of like an infinity scarf, it's like that. And then here's another one that I got. And I got this one wool, merino possum wool hat. This is a, uh, again, a beanie. And then um, there's this one that I got for my daughter and has a cool little possum pom-pom. Oh, and this one is actually not possum or merino wool. This is actually alpaca wool, which I got it because it was so soft. Here's what the hat looks like, and I will put it on for you to show you. It's kind of like a more of a, like a slouchier look, okay? Yeah, mm, I could probably style this a little better. <laughs> the reason why merino possum wool is so popular is because not only is it thin and lightweight, but it actually keeps you very, very warm. I believe it also wicks away moisture. The funny thing about possums is that possums are actually pests in New Zealand. Now I'm done with my stuff. I wanna show you the stuff that my daughter got on this trip. And the first thing is this. <gasps> Soft little alpaca. Oh, look at it, it's so soft. Mm. <laughs> I have a little possum. <laughs> so we got this alpaca from the Agrodome. I think my husband always makes fun of me when I say Agrodome because he says it sounds like a place where angry sheep battle it out, gladiator style, but it is called Agrodome. And the website describes it as a farm amusement park. I typically don't find those places like super exciting, but we had a really good time there. So the experience is divided into two portions. One of them is like a farm show and the other one is like a farm tour. So the farm show basically shows you a bunch of like different farm animals. They show you like seriously like 50 different kinds of sheep and they let you pet them. And there's a guy on stage who shows you how to shear a sheep and teach you how to milk a cow and all that stuff. It was very entertaining. And the second part was the farm tour where you go on a tractor and you go through the farm. And I had very little expectations for this farm tour. Mm. Every time I go on a farm tour, it was like, okay, you see like a bunch of trees and maybe some cows here and there, but it was really cool. Ah. <laughs> there were a ton of alpacas, llamas, and sheep and it was so fun. We saw so many animals and they let you really experience the whole thing and you get to take your time. And then we also went to the kiwi plantation and saw actual kiwis like hanging from the vine and we got to drink fresh kiwi juice and we got to eat manuka honey. That was like really fun. Second thing that I want to show you that we got for my daughter are these 3D cardboard model kits. I ended up getting three of them because one of them is the kia, the kiwi, and the tuatara. And those are just the animals that we actually saw on our trip. Well, actually we didn't see the Kia, but we wanted to. If you ever wanna buy a cool souvenir, you can come home and work on it when you're at home, bored. I would definitely suggest buying something like this. These are really high quality cardboard little 3D models. And here's one that we completed. Here's the Tuatara, which is like cool little lizard native to New Zealand. The cool thing about the Tuatara is they have a third eye right there and their tail actually regenerates. So if it ever falls off, they just grow a new one. That's pretty cool. So the last thing I want to show you guys is this beautiful bag and it has New Zealand birds on there. Woo! So pretty and pink, my daughter's favorite color. Oh, I thought this is great for my daughter if she wants to use it for like a little book bag or something when she got home. And well, there's something in here. Da -da 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 -da. It's a bag full of little birdies. <laughs> so my daughter bought a whole bunch of like little native birds to New Zealand. So the first one is this 
fantail. And we actually saw many fantails when we were hiking around and they are awesome. Their tail, as the name suggests, is like a little fan, but watch when you squeeze a bird. It's pretty cool, huh? Here's another bird. It is called the Tui. And let me squeeze the little tummy. I love the sound of that. We actually heard the Tui many times, but actually never seen one. They were just hidden in the treetops. They never flew out. These look like seagulls, right? Regular old seagulls. But the seagulls in New Zealand sound very different from the seagulls in the States. Listen to their high-pitched squawking noise. Where is it? Come on. Yeah. That's where? <laughs> it's loud, yeah. Uh, what else is in here? Oh, you have the kiwi. Kiwi bird. They're actually nocturnal. We uh, we went to the Kiwi Wildlife Center in Franz Joseph and we saw two baby kiwi birds. It was hard to spot them because you are in like this nocturnal room, so it's like very dark in there. Yep, that's what they sound like. That's all in the bag. So um, that's all for my haul. I hope you guys enjoy it. We had a really, really great time and seeing all these things kind of reminded me of our trip and how much fun we had. Anyways, that's it. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I do have a lot more videos planned for this year. I have a ton of travel videos from last year that I'm still sifting through. And same with the one from early this year, the one from New Zealand. So I do plan on posting a lot. And yeah, if you subscribe, I don't want you to miss out on anything. Yeah, I hope everyone stays safe, stays healthy, be kind to each other, and I'll see you in my next adventure. Bye! Bye.